What's going on guys? So today I actually want to walk you through a general pre-med timeline. This is my pre-med timeline and I think it may be very helpful for all of you. And the good part is I'm going to make it freely accessible to anyone. So uh, let's go from there. Let's do it. All right, so how is this video gonna work? So I'm going to link this spreadsheet below. The way I'm gonna link it is twofold. One is you can download it and then you can change it so you can actually add in your schedule in here, which is fantastic. The second reason is for you to actually have someone's schedule to look at, because again, the whole point of this channel is to increase accessibility. So if you don't have any mentors who are currently in the medical field, treat me as one and hopefully this helps you set things straight. And the way we're gonna approach this video is I'm gonna walk you through each of my four years in college chronologically and show you what I took and how I met my pre-med requirements so that you on your pre-med journey can also do the same. So with that being said, let's start with my first freshman year. Freshman year, I started and I took my general chemistry, uh, which is a requirement for medical school, as well as the general chemistry lab. I took a history class because that's one of the breadth requirements at UC Berkeley. And I took one semester of um, college calculus, which again, you know, the whole year of college level calculus is needed for medical school. So in my first semester, I knocked out general chemistry and I knocked out one half of the calculus requirement. I tried to not go too hard because your first semester in college is really overwhelming. You're trying to learn how to live away from your parents if you're not used to that. You're trying to adapt how to live on your own. You're trying to adapt how to de like develop like all of this independence and balance it with academics. So I strongly recommend you go on the lower end of units in your first semester, which is what I did. As you see, I took 17, but two of those were just seminars, which were pass-fail. And the reason for that is sometimes a lot of these seminars can really educate you about the school. Like for example, I took this thing called Pre-Med 101, which was in Tended to teach me about what it was like to be pre-med. Um, the other thing I will also say is in my fall semester, I also started a service organization. I didn't start it, I joined it. And it was called Road Racked. And the whole point of this was to get more involved in service because I just felt like I wanted to have an extracurricular that was not related to academics. And so I always loved service, so that's where I joined. I joined AMSA, which is the American Medical Student Association, again, because I was an angsty pre-med. And then I got rejected from research. I know everyone wants to get into research right within when they start like undergrad. And guess what? I didn't get it right away. So I want you to feel comfortable knowing that it will be tough to get research when you first start, and that is okay. Now moving on to my second semester at UC Berkeley, uh, I increased my credits quite a bit because I opted to about 21. I got this research thing where I was able to help make um, seminars for undergrads about chemistry and this was also pass fail. So um, it was pass no pass and most of these are tend to be easy classes. So I took three seminars you'll see and I also took organic chemistry, my first semester of organic chemistry with lab. The other thing I took that semester was my second semester of calculus, as well as sociology, which was a breath requirement for my, for my major. Um, in terms of extracurriculars, I stayed involved in my service club. Um, I started my um, chemistry lab development research, which is making lab, lab assignments for people who are starting general chemistry. And I had like a part-time job at the uh, integrative biology department um, at UC Berkeley, which was interesting. So this was my first year. Again, notice that I didn't go too hard on the sciences. I didn't go, didn't go too hard on the math. Uh, I just tried to do the bare minimum and try to really get my roots of what college classes are like because trust me, college classes are a different beast. Now, let's check out what I did in my sophomore year. The other thing I also want to point out here is I took the first half of my, um, to get into medical school, you usually need one year of college level English. And so I took the first half of my college level English requirement here. I took Chicano studies um, and that was just my way of trying to meet that requirement. In the summer in between my first and second year, I actually took two classes. I took biology, um, the first half of my biology requirement, and I took um, Italian studies, which was the second half of my reading and composition requirement or the one year of college English, right? So that is what I did in my summer. Again, note that sometimes people think that you have to do something researchy or crazy over summer. I actually didn't get any internships. I got rejected from every big research lab I applied to. So I was like, whatever, I'll just take classes. And this actually ended up being very pivotal because it gave me the ability to um, graduate half a semester early. So it ended up paying off. So just, just take that in your head and, and keep it at the back of your mind. I did take these classes at um, UC Berkeley, so I didn't take them at a different school, but it's just important that you recognize that. 
In my sophomore year, I took the second half of my organic chemistry requirement, right? You need one year of organic chemistry for medical school. So I took the first half in my first year, second half in my second year. I took multivariable calculus because I was really into math at that point. And so I was like, why not? I think math is super cool. Um, and then I took the first half of my physics requirement. You need one year of physics. So this was the first half of my year of physics. Um, and then I took some pass, no pass classes, which included this public health class as well as this um, student-led course about um, health and medicine. In terms of extracurriculars, I continued my um, basic lab position about like making labs for incoming students. I continued as a road rack officer, so I moved up in hierarchy as from a general member to a uh, leadership role. And I also joined the pre-medical honor society because I was, again, an angsty pre-med. The second half of my sophomore year, I took that second half of my biology requirement. So notice that my first half was done up here in the summer. I finished my second half in the second half of my um, of my second year, um, and then I took and then I actually finally got into re a real research lab. So note that it took me until my second year to actually get into a research lab, and that too near the end of my second year was when I finally got into a research lab, and so I got credit for that. Um, I was a TA for a lot of courses, um, primarily the science courses, because it was a very good way for me to, you know, retain the material. Um, and I also took physiology, uh, which was really helpful for the MCAT. And I also took optometry, which is all about the eye. And I took the second half of my physics requirement. So notice that just going into the end of my second year, I had finished most of my requirements because I knew that the MCAT was changing. This was in, I think, 2014. In 2015, the MCAT was going to change from being three hours to seven hours. And I was like, I really want to try to not take the seven-hour MCAT. So what did I do in my um, second summer, you ask? Well, I studied for the MCAT. That's essentially what I did. I did a little bit of part-time research, but mostly studied for the MCAT. I had some, um, t some small jobs, but again, I was mostly just focused on making sure I could get through the MCAT. And luckily, it worked out well, and I finished the MCAT in my second year. But most people now would not do that, and I don't recommend you do that. The only good part about having taken my MCAT at the end of my second year is I had taken biology and physics. And so coming out of those finals, I was just, I was so on top of those subjects, like just so in my zone, that all I really needed to do for the MCAT was then just study or review my chemistry. So it, it worked out really well because I was always passively studying and tutoring. So I recommend that to a lot of students. One big thing is to always remember to have your extracurriculars work for you if you can. So I know people may be interested in a lot of things, but it's really nice when your extracurricular can help you in some other domain of your life. For example, I loved teaching and I knew that teaching was a huge part of what I was. But it was even easier when I was able to teach something related to the MCAT, for example, because then I wasn't just teaching like, you know, physics, I was teaching like something, you know, intuitive that would eventually help me in the long run if I could explain it to someone else. So it just was one of those things that worked out well, because I was doing so much tutoring. And because I, you know, had finished all my classes, I was able to take the MCAT relatively early. So with that being said, let's now go into my junior year. Okay, so now you're seeing me in my junior year. And again, now you're going to notice I actually had a upward sloping trajectory where I started my undergrad with a bunch of units very early. And then eventually I kind of tapered off and didn't take that many units because I realized, like, oh my God, I front loaded a lot. But a lot of people do it differently. A lot of people will back load. So they'll start easier and then have more classes in the end. I started a bit harder and had fewer classes at the end. But again, notice that in my junior year, I took biochemistry, I took biostatistics, I took microbiology. And the reason for this was to, again, create a holistic understanding of the human body because I knew I wanted to go into medicine. So I was taking classes that would be relevant. And of course, these were needed for some of my majors. I continued in my lab at the Klinman lab. This was a basic science lab with pipettes and all of that stuff. Um, another thing that I did was I continued as a tutor. I tutored general chemistry. And so, yeah, again... Mostly a very chill semester, I think, my third year because I had finished the MCAT and I was just kind of focusing on, you know, trying to make sure I get the best education possible. I then became vice president of Rotaract, which was my service organization. So notice that throughout all three years, as I started getting more comfortable in who I was and what I enjoyed doing, I pursued those opportunities more. It's very easy to spread yourself thin, and you should do that maybe early on to see what you're interested in, but then slowly stop dropping the activities that you don't like, and then focus on the activities that you do like. Like, I loved service, so I knew Rotaract would be something I really wanted to move up in. I love teaching, so that's why I became a tutor, and I tutored for a long time, and I even eventually got paid for it, which was awesome to get paid for tutoring. Um, and then in spring 2015, 
uh, which was the second year, second half of my junior year, I took genomics, genetics, neurobiology, epidemiology, um, and again, I took a research class. So when you subtract out research in both of these units, you'll see that I only had 12 units here, and I only had 14 units here. So again, I told you I, I really got tapered down and didn't take that many units. I took many more early units in my early years. Um, and then I was hired as a Kaplan tutor, which was really nice because then I had a stream of small income. I was also an officer for Pre-Medical Honor Society, and I got to slowly start teaching my own class, uh, not just tutoring, but teach my own class that supplemented a lot of this undergrad material that other people were learning. So in the summer of my junior year, um, I then continued. I actually got accepted at a program called City of Hope. Um, and I will link that program down below. It's actually called the Eugene and Ruth Roberts uh, Research Foundation, and they give a lot of students research uh, stipends to do research over the summer. So I was really happy about that. And then I came back after the summer of my junior year to enter my senior year, which I will now talk about, and it's right over here. This is the most fun year because you can tell I was just already checked out. I only took 16 units, and I made almost all of them pass no pass because I was like, I am so done with school right now. And so I took, you know, a folklore class, which I needed for one of my requirements, but also was very interesting. I took a neuroanatomy class. I took a biophysics of neuroanatomy class. I took an, I made my honors project. I wrote my honors thesis. I learned about nonviolence. And last but not least, I continued many of the extracurriculars I think I told you guys about. I mean, at this point, I had finished my degrees in public health and molecular biology. And so uh, I just spent that next semester doing a lot of extracurriculars, like shadowing at UCSF. I was an MCAT tutor. I finished writing my honors thesis. I started as a health advocate in my local hospital. I taught my own class, as I told you about, which was known as like a group leader role. And so at that point, I was ready to apply to medical school. So many of you may know that to apply to medical school, you'd need to take one year. I did not know that until I actually graduated. So I was like, oh, I guess I need to take a gap year because I didn't, <laughs> didn't know that this whole process took a whole year. So at that point, I was like, okay, I guess I'll take a gap year. And so in my gap year, um, I've, I, of course, applied to medical school, but I continued a lot of my extracurriculars, such as shadowing. Um, I created my board game, which is like very close to my heart because that was like the main project I did in my gap year. Uh, I created an organic chemistry board game, and I remember that was like a huge topic of conversation at a lot of my medical school interviews, and everyone was like very impressed uh, that I did that. And then I, I also started my YouTube channel and then eventually ended up coming to Yale. So I hope this provides a lot of insight to a lot of you who may be struggling to find your journey. I can tell you that every step along the way, I never really knew what the hell I was doing. I was just hoping that if I did all of the things I needed to do, I would find my way. Um, and that is kind of how it worked out. But the lessons I learned was to don't stress too much. You will be okay. Hopefully now you have something to go off of. And more importantly, try to just follow the things you enjoy doing. I've realized that now when I look back, that the things that make the biggest difference were the fact that I was able to do what I love doing. And that really guided ultimately why I want to become a physician because I just love teaching so much. I love learning so much. I just knew that this is where I saw myself. And I kind of let my you know, classes and my extracurriculars tell me where I should be, as opposed to me being like, what do I need to do? You know, So it's okay, believe in the process, you're gonna be fine. And I genuinely hope this was helpful for many of you. I'm linking it in the bio below. And with that, um, I'm gonna you know, bid adieu, but thank you all for watching. I hope you come back for more. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.